I found this hard to believe when I heard it, but that astronaut, Scott Kelly, he grew two inches after an extended stay in space. He is no longer identical to his twin. How about that? <laughs> Joining us now, Mae Jemison, former NASA astronaut and first African-American woman in space. Mae, how do you explain this? How does someone grow two inches because they're in space, what, 200 days? Uh, you know how you walk around every day and you sort of feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Well, that's gravity <laughs> pulling you down. And when you go up into space, it loosens your backbone up so you have this opportunity to grow. You also get a facelift while you're up there. <laughs> but good morning. Yeah, uh, good morning, <laughs> ma'am. Great to see you. Uh, look, there's a question which all of us around the table here wanted to ask you, and I've got the chance to ask you. What's it like when that rocket takes off? What does it feel like? Well, I mean, it's really exciting. For me, it was um, thinking back to when I was a little girl growing up on the south side of Chicago and how excited she would have been, right, to know <laughs> that she was there in these years to come. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, either rocket shakes and shimmies and things like that. But it's really so much for me about what I'm going to do. And you won't believe that the first thing that I saw when I got into space was my hometown, Chicago. Uh, no kidding. Wow. But it looked just like it did on the maps because <laughs> you could see Chicago outline from the farmlands right yeah, that were yeah. around it yeah got it like illinois growing up in the breadbasket of the of the country <laughs> and 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 so to me you know, with a corny transition, that's what brings us here today. It's really talking about agriculture. I'm jealous, man. I am flat out jealous, and that's a fact. I do want to talk to you about what you're doing in schools. You're pushing for more science, technology, engineering, and math education in schools. What are you doing? So for over 20 years, I've had the pleasure of working with Bayer on uh, making science make sense and really improving science literacy. It's something that I was very committed to as well, in fact, when I first came out of NASA. And what Bayer has done over the years is to focus on different areas of science, uh, both in understanding how do we probe, how do we understand what, uh, uh, what motivates uh, children, how to do better curriculum. And from time to time, even focus in on an area, a particular discipline that we need to promote. And today we're introducing uh, an initiative that's between Bayer and 4-H, um, which is Science Matters. Okay. Here's the thing, here's the context. By 2050, we'll have over 10 billion people in this world. We're gonna need to produce over 60% more food sustainably. Okay. How do we do that? We do that by having more agricultural science and education technology. Yeah. and um, education. And so we have to do that by making sure that kids understand that there are thousands of jobs that are going unfilled in this country in mm. science and technology. And those jobs range from, yes, the things that you think about, biology and the life sciences, sure. but all the way to um, a computer technology, IT, and other things. Um, and people can find out about it by going to 4h.org slash bear. I'm so glad you're involved in this and so glad that you could come on the show and tell us about it because I think it's extremely important. Thanks, ma'am.